Formula One has done the impossible. It's got teams to vote through a series of changes to the rules in the sport's best interests. Granted, a lot of the teams were opposed to these new for 2019 aero changes, but Formula One management and the FIA used a little loophole to ensure they didn't need a majority from the teams, and here we are. Three key changes for 2019. So what are these new rules? What problems are they designed to solve, and how will they attempt to solve them? Well, in 2017, F1 brought in a raft of new design rules in an effort to make the cars faster. That's all they were designed to do, just make the cars faster, to the tune of about 5 seconds a lap. Unfortunately, all of these rules, wider cars, more aggressive aero, lower rear wings, etc, work to make overtaking much, much harder. The cars were fast, but they couldn't race, overtaking halved in 2017 compared to the previous season. The opening race of 2018 in Melbourne was frightening in how little overtaking there was, and this spurred the powers that be into action. Something had to be done before the next major set of rule changes in 2021. Some tweaks had to be brought in for next year. Formula 1 and the FIA were already deep into a long study on how to improve close racing and overtaking in preparation for this 2021 rule set. Working with engineers, including those from F1 teams, some ideas had started to show promise, and it was those early studies that inspired these three small changes for next year. The new rules then. 1. The front wing will be simplified and its span extended and its outwash reduced. I'll explain all of that in a second. 2. The brake ducts will be simplified, with all their winglets removed. And three, the rear wing will be made deeper and wider. So let's go through these one by one to understand the thought behind each of these changes and how it could help with overtaking. The front wing will be simplified, made wider, and produce less outwash. Right, so if you want a full picture of how the front wing disturbs the air, you should watch my aerodynamics video by clicking here, or the link in the description. I'll give you the simple version here. At the moment, a lot of work at the front wing is to produce huge, powerful vortices to trap and calm the turbulent, messy airflow coming off the speedy front tyres. As such, the hugely detailed, complex elements of the front wing are designed not for downforce, but for directing air right down the length of the car through vortex generation. The problematic side effect of all of this is that all the air flying around the outside of the car, the outwash they speak of, created an incredibly disturbed wake behind the car, and this disturbed wake makes it difficult for a chasing car to stay relatively close behind. See, all the aerodynamic devices on an F1 car are designed to expect a nice simple airflow. The front wing does a lot of work in meeting the oncoming airflow and starting to direct it in all the right places down the body, the barge boards, the side pods, the rear wing and the floor etc. But if the air meeting the front wing is all tangled and messy, with flow direction, air pressure all chaotic and unpredictable, then the front wing and the rest of the air on the car can't do its job properly. And this means, when following another car through the corners, the chasing car simply cannot grip the road as effectively and it falls behind. You've probably noticed in races that a chasing car can catch up to about one and a half, two seconds behind the leading car, and then it sort of stops there. It's frustrating to watch. And that's why some drivers say you need a two second advantage over the person ahead. You need a massive car advantage to overcome this dirty air problem. So, understanding this, the new rules demand a simpler front wing. Bear in mind the rules are very vague at the moment, but the idea is going to be to clean up all these complex elements and stop the cars throwing these incredibly energetic airflows around the outside of the car. The front wings will still play a big part in guiding the first rush of air, but in a simpler, less destructive way. Making the front wing wider is a neat little touch that means the air guiding elements have to do less work to get the air here, out and around the tyre. If the wing already extends to the width of the tyre or beyond, then the wing has to do less work to get the vortex around the tyre. In essence, the winglet won't need to create such an energetic vortex. The front wings are the big change for next year, but what about the other two rules? Well, the brake ducts have been sprouting winglets in recent years, and the reason for this ties into the complex front wings. Like the barge boards and the turning vades down the side of the car, the winglets on the brake ducts are all part of an effort to guide and turn the airflow of vortices from the front wing. Removing them leaves the air ducts to do simply what they're supposed to do, funnel fast-moving air through the brakes to carry away the heat. The rear wings are going to be made wider and deeper. This is in an effort to increase the power of DRS. How does that work then? Well, the rear wing is a huge downforce generating device, but with downforce comes drag. That big old rear wing plane sitting in the way of the fast flowing air generates a huge amount of drag that holds the car back, reducing its top speed. DRS essentially flips the rear wing up and out of the airflow, reducing the drag effect massively. That's why it's called the drag reduction system. Making the rear wing wider and deeper means the rear wing will be much more powerful at generating both downforce and drag. Think of it as having a big parachute on the back of the car, and by making it wider and deeper, we've given the car a bigger parachute. So what happens when the DRS is activated? That parachute effect goes away. 
So the relative difference between the leading car with its rear wing closed and the chasing car with the DRS active and the rear wing open is an even bigger effect. It's gone from having a massive drag to having a very small drag. So hopefully the chasing car will be able to catch the leading car and go for a pass. The chasing car loses speed through the corners, so by the time it gets to a long straight, it's too far behind to catch and then overtake. The DRS is simply an effort to nullify the dirty air problem. Now, will these new rules work? Possibly. I think it's definitely worth a try. Some of the teams are complaining that the research that led to these interim solutions was too fresh and not thorough enough, and that pushing through half thought through ideas was what led to this mess in the first place. I, for one, am glad they're trying something. Sitting on their hands for another two years seems complacent, and that complacency in the face of frustrated fans is no better exemplified by this Christian Horner quote. Better to leave things alone as they are for now. F1 is good enough for the next few years. Good enough. I don't think anyone in F1 should be satisfied with good enough. You don't charge fans £200 a ticket to watch something that's good enough. You don't put an entire sport behind a paywall if it's only good enough. I wasn't happy with his word choice, can, can you tell? But what do you think? Should they have pushed through these interim solutions and see how they go, or just grit their teeth through the next few years until the big rule changes come in? How do you feel about the balance between F1 being left to come up with the fastest, most innovative racing cars in the world at the potential expense of good racing? If it came down to it, would you rather curtail the innovation or the ability to race close and overtake? Let me know in the comments. This should be fun. And if you're the kind of person who uses keys to unlock things and fancy some fun F1 accessories to keep those keys together, then why not get yourself some F1 All-Star key rings from Hayley Mulch? They're double-sided, good quality and cute as all hell. The Etsy shop link is in the description.